from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, April the 23rd, 2021. We open with unrest in Jerusalem's Old City last night and today with violent clashes between far-right Jewish extremists and Palestinian protesters. With tensions high with the start of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan and several incidents of late of violence on the part of Arab youth towards Jews and on the part of Jewish youth towards Arabs in the capital. The United States weighed in on the situation, which is not a common occurrence. The U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem released a statement in English, Hebrew, and Arabic calling for calm. The embassy said we are deeply concerned about the incidents of violence in Jerusalem over the last several days. We hope all responsible voices will promote an end to incitement, a return to calm, and respect for the safety and dignity of everyone in Jerusalem. Friday afternoon, Muslim prayers for Ramadan at the Temple Mount went on without incident. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the U.S. Climate Summit today. The two-day summit, being held virtually, began yesterday on Earth Day, led by President Joe Biden. Netanyahu spoke in his remarks of the U.S. president's strong position on the issue and spoke of what Israel is already accomplishing in the area, including its work with solar energy and with water, and what Israel commits to do in the future. I've known President Biden for some 40 years. I know the strength of his commitment for stronger action on climate. This is a commitment we in Israel fully share. I pledge to reduce Israel's carbon footprint and to completing a successful transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy by 2050. A follow-up for you now on a letter circulating the U.S. House of Representatives that we told you about against conditioning USA to Israel. Over 75 percent of the House has now signed the bipartisan letter, which was initiated by Ted Deutsch and Michael McCall, written in response to a bill from Betty McCollum, which called for oversight on how Israel uses the USA that it receives. The Deutsch McCall letter states in part, we recognize that not every member of Congress will agree with every policy decision of every Israeli government. However, it stressed reducing funding or adding conditions on security assistance would be detrimental to Israel's ability to defend itself against all threats. Also stressing that Israel is America's closest Mideast ally and that Israel is a specific investment in the peace and prosperity of the entire Middle East. It is notable that among the 331 members of the House who signed the letter, Democrats and Republicans in almost even numbers are several progressives from the Democratic Party, like Andy Levin and Ro Khanna. Pro-Israel lobby AIPAC shared video on social media of the broad support for the Jewish state. From both sides of the aisle, writing 331 members of Congress, Democrats and Republicans stand united. Full funding of American security assistance to Israel is a vital investment in our national security interests. IDF Chief of Staff Aviv Kochavi will travel to Washington on Sunday, his first official U.S. visit since taking on the role. The IDF tweeted that Kochavi and his delegation will meet with senior U.S. officials at the Department of Defense to strengthen cooperation between the U.S. and Israel. Kochavi is hosted by Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, and the two will discuss common challenges, including the Iranian threat. The IDF tweeted that the Israel-U.S. alliance is stronger than ever. Israel and Bahrain, who each have had successful vaccination campaigns against the COVID-19 pandemic, reached a major agreement last night to mutually recognize each other's vaccinations, allowing for those who are fully inoculated, holding so-called green passes, to be exempt from quarantine upon arrival to either country. 
The deal was negotiated between Bahraini Foreign Minister Abdul Latif Al Zayani and Israeli Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi, who said the unprecedented deal between Israel and Bahrain demonstrates the historical change that has occurred in the Middle East in recent months. Former ambassador of Bahrain to the United States, Huda Nonu, tweeted the news of, she said, the world's first bilateral agreement for mutual recognition of COVID-19 vaccine passports for quarantine-free travel between two countries. By the way, yesterday, Israel reached two milestones with, for the first time in 10 months, no new COVID-19 deaths reported in Israel, and also passing the threshold now of more than 5 million Israelis, over half the total population, having received both doses of vaccine against COVID-19. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, April the 23rd. Live Shabbat services are coming up at 6 o'clock from New York City's Central Synagogue, followed by Shabbat services from the Hampton Synagogue. At 8.30, it's IDF musicians in concert. At 9, the film Lost Town. At 10.30, a replay of the Hampton Synagogue services, followed by an encore presentation of the Central Synagogue services. And coming up next, it's a look at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, April the 23rd, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well, and Shabbat Shalom.